Don't you just hate it when it's a gorgeous, idyllic day, you're walking around enjoying the sunshine and the cool breeze, and then fat, diseased demons of the void start chasing you through the woods? Yeah, I hate that too. Welcome to Nurgle, we hope you enjoy your stay. Cathay vs. the Bubonic Swarm in this one, in our first full Domination Mode replay ever. It was a good one, against a good opponent. The legendary Turin is in control of Miao Ying and the Kingdom of the Dragon, while I do my best to infect her with every plague imaginable. We're at the Silver Spire, which if you recall was added all the way back in Warhammer 1, but it's been repurposed here for a brand new game mode. I swear guys, I'm not obsessed with Soul Grinders, but I do think the Plague Hulk has the potential to be really good in this particular matchup, and frankly, great unclean ones are not a good idea against factions with mass missiles anyway, which is why I've gone for a Herald on a Rotfly instead. This is a really good, cost-efficient Lord with access to more AoE healing than even the Vampires have. Locusts of Fecundity and Fleshy Abundance together will give you insane burst healing, one just as a passive bounce spell, the other at a highly expensive cost of Winston Magic. He's tanky, he's fast, and he can always be exactly where you need him to be to support your front line. The rest of my starting army is just Forsaken and Nurglings to quickly establish map control and contest those points. You can see my full army at the top left of your screen right now. Exalted Plague Bearers, two Cultists of Nurgle, more infantry, some Plague Toads, Furies, and Nurglings will round out the rest of my support. We'll talk about the significance of those Cultists in a little bit. So what I'm going to try to do here is have the Plague Hulk camp that mid-objective and bombard any infantry or archers that come into range. Even with Miao Ying on the field, there's simply not enough on the Cathayan side that can kill it quickly, so I can kind of just sit there and blow stuff up. But remember, we can't cap for the first three minutes of the game. Shifting over to the Cathayan side, we'll get a look at their starting and reinforcement armies. Jade Lancers in the Vanguard, supported by four Jade Warriors, two with crossbows, Longma Riders, and Meow Mami herself. Backup force is a Terracotta Sentinel, which is super strong in this matchup, because Nurgle damage output is quite subpar. They have no ranged troops, and they have no bonus versus large, so killing armored monsters is quite difficult for them. As for the Storm Dragon herself, she has Wrath of the Storm and Talons of Night, for clearing objectives with AoE damage, Disdain of the Dragon for debuffing rank and file troops, and Aura of Majesty for debuffing enemy characters. And in the air, she'll be supported by the Elite Longmo with their 75 charge bonus, 105 speed, and 110 armor. Not entirely sure they justify their exorbitant cost, but they are more useful in this game mode than they would be in an old-fashioned 1v1, I can tell you that. So as the battle gets underway, it will be the Soul Grinder that draws first blood, dropping that triple shot Flint Bombardment Mortar, 18 kills in the opening volley and dealing good damage to two units as a result. Not a bad start at all. Jade Warriors returning fire with their crossbows, posturing up to cap this initial point, which they should be able to do. Nerlings are great for swarming a point, but I only have two of them on the field at the moment, so I can't just send them all their way. Forsaken will probably beat Jade Warriors 1v1, but they'll take a while to do it, and typically you'd rather have your Forsaken flanking than be the front line. I'm just using them for their speed right now, and the fact that I can swing to a different angle if I need to, if another point gets contested. We've got Plague Bearers coming out now, and some Chaos Furies overhead. The Furies will be really annoying for Miao Ying to deal with, and will help deal with the Longma Riders and perhaps dive into the back line to tie up some of these Archers as well. Not too worried about the Focus Fire at the moment, it's just Nurglings, we're kind of dancing around, they can shoot them all day long. Not a huge loss if some of those little cuties go down, but obviously the big thing here is getting rid of those crossbows with the Flame Bombardment Cannon, because it'll make capping the point easier, and it'll mean that their ranged DPS is cut down quite substantially once they start bleeding models. Here come the Furies over the top. They will ignore the dragon, of course, go straight for the crossbows, and the swarm shall begin. Now this opening engagement in the middle should initially go the way of Cathay, I would think. She has AoE wave clear to quickly get a bunch of infantry off the points. Cavalry moving to my point at the moment, trying to overwhelm the Nurglings that are over on that side. And of course, Longma are a great counter to the Chaos Furies in quite a few ways. So here comes the Vortex spell. It's a stationary one, and this is the kind of spell that's going to be used a ton in Domination Mode. It's a Vortex, but it doesn't move. It's like Pit of Shades in some ways. And so while she's in melee, dealing with all the Forsaken and the Nurglings, she can wave clear like crazy by spamming this really cool looking spell. And it's one of the biggest issues Nurgle will have as a faction. Pendulum, Burning Head, Storm of the Night, Dragon Claws, Ripping and Tearing, it was already difficult 
to dodge many of these spells in Warhammer 2. You had to move like the second the windup began, which is hard when there's so much going on. But with Nurgle, even if you see it coming and move, most of your troops aren't fast enough to get out of the way. Only time will tell if their health pools are big enough to make up for that weakness, but my initial inclination is that they are not. Here comes the Terracotta Sentinel, stomping straight out of John Woo films. Hard-boiled and cracking skulls with that double-sided halberd or glaive. I'm not sure what you'd call that. I guess it's a glaive. Some really cool animations on this beast, and I think it's going to be a really important unit in quite a few matchups, especially against Nurgle, where, like I said, they're severely lacking in bonus versus large and AP to an extent as well. Longbow Riders into the Nurglings, and they should do fine there. I mean, not really what the unit is designed for, but with a clean charge, the 75 charge bonus should be enough, and Plague Bears able to push off the enemy cavalry from that first point. So, objectives-wise, 600 to 300 at the moment, two caps in favor of Nurgle, one in favor of Cathay, and here comes the Plague Cultist. Now, these guys have a really cool ability. It's called Gate of Chaos, and it summons a unit of Plague Bearers onto the field. Now, what is one of Nurgle's biggest weaknesses? Mobility. What's an important thing to have in a game mode like this one? Mobility. Plague Cultists bring that by riding on Chaos Steeds. They can quickly get to a point that's heavily contested and just drop a full unit of Plague Bearers on the objective. That can be potentially huge. At the moment, the Herald is supporting his homies with Fleshy Abundance. Miao Ying dove into the back line to deal with that Soul Grinder, but a big AoE heal, enough to keep him topped off. And the Longma Riders and Miao Ying attempting to surround the Herald and finish him off for good, but with Cloud of Flies, that plus nine melee defense and all that HP and healing, it's gonna be hard to take him down. Here come the Plague Bearers, and yeah, this is why this is such a powerful ability, especially for a faction that is perhaps lacking in some speed. So, Plague Bearers directly behind the enemy Jade Warriors. Cultists can charge in from the front. Remember that he has armor sundering, so he should be able to get through the tankiness of those infantry. And now, a great engagement for Nurgle, and potentially the third objective swinging their way. We'll see. Dude, that guy has seen better days. Those lesions and bubos looking pretty nasty on the cultist. Rotfly and the Herald are out of danger, but the Forsaken are unfortunately not. Another Talons of Night will send them to the Nether Realm. Good night, sweet princes. Well done from the Long Riders. Clear up all the chaff on this objective, too. So, Turin has taken the mid. He has point two and point three still. Gate of Chaos has not swung that objective in their favor yet, and Turn might try to go for a triple cap here. He is looking really strong in the middle, but Plague Bearers and behind them, Exalted Plague Bearers are stomping their way over. They'll just take 87 years to do it. Flint Bombardment Cannon ready to open up once again. It is somewhat limited on the ammunition side, but if it's landing shots like that, you're more than going to make your cost back with all of those volleys. And the Plague Bears are getting... I can't find Telestration. Telestration would be helpful here. I want to draw blue circles, but you can see the Plague Bears are fully surrounding the Terracotta Sentinel. That's exactly what you do not want to do with your Plague Bears. Now, units are very sticky, so I can't remember if I clicked an attack order on it or I tried to push through and then they just went back into melee with the Sentinel. But... Yeah, if you blob up around a single entity, Miao Ying is going to punish that super heavily. Colt is trying to take the other objective, and here's what I'm talking about. Talents of Night for the umpteenth time, and Plague Bears are in pain. That extra health pool, not sure it's helping out that much, but that was also pretty much worst case scenario. I wouldn't mind seeing Plague Bears with maybe a little bit more health. There's a double fury attack on the Longmore Riders alongside the Herald of Nurgle enough to deal with that threat. Chaos Furies are really good. A very strong unit. And a cannon is out as well, currently sniping the Soul Grinder. Would not have expected to see a cannon here, but with the way the map's set up, I can only attack it from one direction. He's pretty much set up against the white line, so I have to march through many of his troops to even get at it unless I just want to send Chaos Furies over the top, and he'll be able to support with more Longma Riders and with Miao Ying herself. So the Soul Grinders in mortal peril at the moment might need to take cover in these alcoves on the flanks. And with the Peasant Cavalry nearby, Terracotta Sentinel stomping around, Turin really is dominating this middle objective and I'm losing tons of troops 
as I try to take it back. Even the Exalted Plague Bearers not looking too healthy, and another Storm of the Night to help clear out that infantry. There's, there's just no way for them to dodge it. They're not fast enough. I would never be able to get out of the way of that AoE in time. So all you could do with Nurgle is just try and tank through all that DPS. Now, Plague Bearers are, of course, pretty tanky. They're surviving for now, but they're hurting pretty bad, and I've got to do something to change how the complexion of this game is going. Harpies over the top into the cannons, but there are a bunch of Jade Lancer Cataphracts nearby who should be able to clear up that threat and save the cannon. I will probably quite frequently call Furies Harpies. They're the same thing to me. They're just the demonic version, essentially. And the Furies are doing a ton of work right now. They're clearing up a ton of the crossbows alongside the Herald on his Rotfly. And here comes the second Plague Cultist of Nurgle, dropping his Gate of Chaos and unleashing a bunch of Plague Bearers into the world to help me cap this point. Now, the mid is where the entire game is going to swing one way or the other. A big push is coming. I'm about to throw everything I possibly can at that middle objective to try to get it back in my favor. Now, the nice thing is that Nurgle has tons of healing, so I should be able to get the Exalted Plague Bearers and some of these other units back into the fight with Fecundity and some of these other army spells. Here come the Plague Toads, and here comes a little bit more of the mobility side of the Nurgle roster. Those Furies are being super annoying, and they're actually preventing a lot of these Cathayan troops from reinforcing on the midpoint, and the Herald has still not died after all this time. He's been in some pretty precarious situations, but he's just so tanky with that cloud of flies, and even though he's being engaged by Miao Ying and the Terracotta Sentinel, he's out healing through all that damage. The Soul Grinder is still alive too, and even though the cannon's firing at him, more AoE heals. Yes, this is what's so fantastic about Nurgle, you can kind of bait your opponent a little bit, make them think that they're about to kill you off, and then go, oh no, I'm too weak, help me. Suddenly, you're back up to full HP after an overcast fleshy abundance. So the Soul Grinder should be fine after that heal. And that critical mass that kind of characterizes Nurgle as a faction is beginning to take shape. They're pushing all their bodies onto that middle objective, pushing through and going straight for that cannon and trying to get all these Cathayan reinforcements pushed back into their spawn. They might be able to do it. It's a 200 point lead for Turin and the Cathayans, but they've lost control of mid, and there's been a rapid shift in their army building too. The Terracotta Sentinel will pretty much be left on an island here, it doesn't have enough speed to escape, but Turin started investing his points in speed, so he can attempt to overwhelm my natural objective, which is the one closest to my spawn. Essentially he's saying, middle fight might be a lost cause now, Let's Blitzkrieg the other flank and see if we can double cap a different area of the map. So Miao Ying and that cavalry contingent going down to point one, while more cav is coming out of his spawn and clearing up all the Chaos Furies that are going after the artillery. But in the middle, I can heal up, get ready for the coming fight, and advance. I don't necessarily have to stay on the point, and in some instances, it's best not to. A lot of times, it's better to move forward, advance into your enemy spawn, and prevent them from getting even close to the objective. Here comes the cavalry. Jade Lancer Cataphracts first into the breach, followed by Miao Ying, and this is going to be a really close game now, because we've got the Terracotta Sentinel holding it down in the center, just being a beast. Plague Toads moving into the spawn to munch up all these peasant archers, and a huge mobile wing of heavy cav, knights, and a dragon moving over to take the initial objective. It's a double cap in favor of Nurgle at the moment, and I just now took the lead by about 75, but so many more troops are coming my way. The Pox Riders, the Plague Toads with actual Plague Bears atop them, coming down the mountainside. Not really the fight they'd love to take, they're better versus infantry, but whatever has speed here is what must get sent that way to try to prevent the double cap in the end game. Terracotta Sentinel will just try to take it out, but he's surrounded by a lot of scary troops and turns throwing everything into this choke point to stop the Nurgle spawns from getting to that objective. More cataphract charges bowling through the Nurglings, and they're going to be able to successfully stop my troops from getting over there but they pulled some cav off of the point, and that means he's capping it slower now. He still doesn't have control of the first objective. Meanwhile, peasant archers are being absolutely feasted upon by these plague toads, and Cathayan infantry at this point will not have enough time 
to move onto the mid capture point. There's just no way. They do not have enough speed to get there in time. So it's all about point one now. So he will successfully get the double cap, but they're capping so slow because everything else moved off the point and cavalry only has a capture strength of three while infantry has a capture strength of six. If he had more mass and more troops on that point, even if it was cav, he would be capping it faster, but it's slow now. There's a 500 point lead for Nurgle. The Terracotta Sentinel will die to the Plague Cultist and to the Rotfly with the Herald atop it. Its armor is sundered from 100 down to 70. And with that loss, as the Soul Grinder moves into melee, it looks like the forces of Nurgle are going to be able to take this battlefield. But we can't end up properly without some nice close-ups, right? Plague Hulk moving in, vomiting. Destroying the infantry, that thing was a beast all game long, and we'll take a look at the stats in just a second, but first, the Terracotta Sentinel must fall. GG to turn, that was a really close game, and honestly, I think he might have been able to get me if he kept maybe one or two more cav units on the point instead of moving them all off into that choke point to plug it up and prevent my pox riders from moving down the hill. It was a good idea. But as soon as he did it, he realized it because we were in Discord and he was like, oh my god, I shouldn't have moved all the calf off because it meant that he capped it too slowly and I kept the double cap for longer than I should have. But ultimately, I'm not sure if it would have been enough. It would have been very close. Herald, 1500 damage value, 1300 on my Soul Grinder, 3600 on Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon. Forsaken did well in establishing some of that map control early. And in terms of my reinforcements... I think the MVPs were definitely the play cultists, particularly that second one. That Gate of Chaos changed the complexion of that game about halfway through, helped me get the midpoint and allowed me to establish a bit of a lead and kind of push him back into his spawn. But Miao Ying, a monster with her Storm of the Night, of course, and the Soul Grinder, though the damage value wasn't truly incredible, 1200 is still very solid. It was shooting into chaff. It wasn't going to earn very much fighting peasants and jade warriors, but... Just the ability for it to clear out crossbowmen and help me establish control in the mid. It was a really good unit. 158 kills is nothing to sneeze at. And I think in certain matchups, it will be a go-to pick. It was really quite strong in that center fight. I was impressed with the cannon. Got 1100 damage value shooting into the soul grinder. But I was able to out heal it. And yeah, really fun game with Turin. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one.